Yo, Jason here, Diomedes Industries. I just wanted to talk to you guys today about sharpening your head knife. I've got some head knife blanks in here um, that I need to start putting handles on. Um, and I will show you guys how to sharpen this. I don't sharpen them usually uh, more than the way they are when they're ground, which are incredibly sharp, until the process is done. But we can use this blade or even the Kiridashi model um, as an example of how to treat this. Essentially, the Kiridashi is a single bevel blade. Um, as they come from you, mine are mostly flat, come to you, mine are mostly flat, but they have a slight convex here at the edge um, just to create some strength uh, there. You can flatten that more if you like. Um, I find the performance to not really change that much given how thin this blade is and how wide the bevel is. But it's a single bevel, whereas this a double, is a double bevel. Um, the principles are the same. <laughs> you're going to sharpen one end. Uh, you're going to flip it over when you do this one, whereas this one you're going to simply drop the flat back. So I'll show you guys a little bit more. But let's go through first what you're going to need for um, tools in this situation. You're going to need some form of ability to sharpen this knife um, and then hone it. Those are two different operations. Sharpening takes place when you use some form of uh, abrasive that is uh, designed to take material off more quickly to reduce the uh, sharpening point to its apex. There's a lot more we can go into here, but I'm just going to give you the basics. You can get diamond stones. That would be one uh, solution to this problem. This is a brand new set of three diamond stone, or uh, uh, sorry, um, water stones. Uh, this is a set of three of them. Uh, from the King Corporation. These are Japanese water stones. Uh, here is my used bin over here. I keep these all separate. These are dished out because I have sharpened them uh, for convexing. So I have a set of convex ones and then I have set these set aside for Scandinavian grinds and things like that for an absolute flat surface. Um, 800 grit, 1200 grit, 4000 grit. The grits are different in the Japanese stones than they are uh, for sandpaper. So don't treat those the same. That's not the same as 800, 1200, and 4000. But if you get these three, you can sharpen almost any knife out there. I would advise you getting a uh, small rubber stand. It just stops the blocks from sliding around. And then if you use them a ton and you wanna keep them absolutely flat, get a flattening stone. This one's from Norton and that allows you to keep the surfaces absolutely flat. I don't think you need to spend $100, $120 to have a good sharpening system for what we're doing. I think all you need basically is a strop, and you can make one on your own or buy one of mine, um, and a little bit of wet dry sandpaper. If it were me, I would build myself a strop that was the width of one half your sheet of sandpaper, and you can just tear it in half and you can double up what you've got. I put little feet on mine because that stops them from moving around, uh, at least when the feet are clean. And then you're going to need some form of uh, compound to add to your strop. This is a, um, a coarse grit. This is a more fine grit. I'd probably call this more like medium. I got these. These two are from Bark River. Um, also, you could get others. This is from JRE. Um, they have a four-sided strop bat, um, which has three compounds, as you can see here. You can buy the compounds from them. This is literally a lifetime supply. And then one that has a, um, a uh, plain uh, leather end. Th this one is 15 years old, and I've never done much to it besides just take compound off and put compound on. But you can just make your own. Um, and then once you've got it loaded, I would get three grits of sandpaper, uh, wet, dry sandpaper. Uh, I get the Duragold kind just off of Amazon, uh, and 400, 800, and 1,000. You're rarely going to go to 400. You have had to have <clears throat> truly damaged the edge of your blades if you're going to 400. I think if you've gotten them quite dull, you could still start at 1,000. 
but you're gonna want that to sit on this uh, leather bottom here. That gives it a little bit of flex. The difference between a straight single grind and a convex grind, or even a double bevel and a convex grind, this having a convex uh, edge, is that it is bullet pointed. It, they come together in a, in a, in a uh, um, fashion like this, whereas a flat bevel will be a straight flat edge. So if you were going to be sharpening something that was truly a single grind, you could put it on a flat piece of stone like this or a good flat piece of glass and then sharpen your blade like that. And that would retain your flat edge. You can also do that on flat stones. We don't want that though, because we want to match the way this knife came and we put a convex edge on it, okay? So we want that to sort of cup around, come around the blade. We don't want it to come all the way around. We don't want this to be mushy, right? Some people use a um, mouse pad for this process. I think that takes a very light touch and that's possible to do. I don't have a very light touch, so I use leather. I've also found it to be sort of self-correcting. So let me show you how to do that now that we have the tools. You've got a strap in front of you now or even just a piece of leather sitting on a flat surface. Okay, that, that will work, okay? You put some compound on it, although you can use the, the paper without compound at first. I just find this just as easy to do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this thousand grit. This is well-worn thousand grit. I've been doing this for a while because I don't need this to do much. And then we're gonna strop this and we're only gonna catch about half this blade. That's okay. We can always flip it around and come back on it and catch the other half. This will take practice, okay? And what you're trying to do is catch the edge of this without rolling the edge. What you wanna do is just get the edge that needs to be sharpened and not go over that edge. One way that you can really test yourself is to get a Sharpie. I should have added that to our tools. <laughs> to get a Sharpie and, and uh, put a mark on that edge. Now, what we don't want is to be back here on our edge, okay? We don't want to be way back here because then we're not sharpening the edge. We also don't want to be so far over the tip that we're only just, just catching it because then we're rolling the edge and actually making it duller. Be like if I started sharpening like this. I would just be rounding the edge, not bringing it to an apex. So this takes some practice. Let me show you what too shallow looks like. And now with this skinny blade, you don't need to go very sharp. You're not gonna be way up here, okay? But if we go too shallow and we start to strop, what we're gonna find is you're way back here and we're not even to the edge yet. We haven't gotten to the place where we need to go. We're just wiping away uh, some of the stuff before the edge. So we end up with all the marker just around the edge there, okay? So let's put our Sharpie spot mark back down. All right, boop. We'll do that real quick. Let that dry for just a second. And then what we're gonna do the good news is when you are a little shallow, you're not hurting anything with this knife. You're not rounding your edge. You're just sort of polishing back here. You'll have to take those scratches out if you want them to come out, but you're not hurting the edge. So start too shallow, okay? And then you're gonna wanna rock that ever so slightly as you go until you feel the edge grab. That can't be taught. You're gonna have to feel that. It also sounds different. So let's see if we can get that sound to make its way. Hear it? It kind of makes a different sound. There. This sound is different from this sound. I don't know if you can hear that. I think you will when you practice. Now notice, We've wiped away the edge up to the edge. So we're just gonna run that edge there. And then when you get good, when you get better, you won't have to rock into it quite as much and go quite as wide on uh, your attempt here. 
you can simply start closer to the edge. You'll know it after you experience it. And don't worry, you can't really break it unless you're just, you know, smashing it up. That even then, you're gonna screw it up. We can fix it. The blade will blade will look different. It'll be a little smaller, but you can't break it. Okay, you just can't. You don't have a, a strong enough equipment here to break it. So we're gonna start a little bit rocked, and we're gonna pull that back. And what you'll notice then is, see how we left all that alone? We got just that edge. You don't want to go up here. You want to be on that edge. Now again, I've been doing this for quite a while, and these are the, literally the knives I designed. So I'm going to be better at this at first. And you're going to need to get your muscle memory up. Okay? You're going to need to get your muscle memory up. Now look, I can tell there I haven't gone around my corner as much. I need to pay a little more attention to that. So I'm gonna come back and make sure I'm rotating that wrist a little more and come around front. There, we're getting it. Let's do a little bit more. You can learn a lot through the Sharpie test. Okay, so we'll do that on both sides. Now, what you'll start to feel is what people call a burr or a wire edge. All they're saying is you've now drug, here's your blade, you've now stropped around the edge of this blade and pulled some of the material on the back side. What you'll do then is flip it over, strop it, and that will break that wire edge off or it will start flipping it back and forth until eventually it breaks that wire edge off, okay? So you're gonna wanna keep sharpening, practicing using your Sharpie as needed and then you're gonna feel it, okay? The wire edge has gone back to the other side. And you're gonna keep doing that, increasing in your grits until you're done sharpening and on to honing. There's no magical time when that takes place, but I would say certainly when you go to the strop, you're starting to hone. You've set your edge, you're just now polishing out the scratches. You're taking those scratches away and you'll feel that resistance change as well on uh, when you go to the strop. It'll even sound different, or at least it does to me over practice. So we're gonna pull this back. Please don't think that what how I'm doing this is the only way. There's a million different ways. Practice and experiment with what way your hand works best. I see some people, they'll do the whole edge. I'm just not very good at that. I do about a half at a time. And I sort of blend those in, right? I also found this compound from Bark River. I really like it. This course has got, I can feel whatever grit they use, pumice or, I have no idea. I'm not into the science of it that much. Is really, truly sharp and you can feel the difference. Also, if you've gotten some scratches in here, lay that bad boy down and just give her a push back and forth. You don't wanna come up, you'll cut your strop and you'll have to replace it. Ask me how I know. Don't, shh, don't look at that spot or that spot. That's <laughs> where I've made mistakes. I made this out of a one by four, by the way. Oak, so nice. Actually, it was scrap. I had to fill some holes that I had drilled in there. And so we're gonna polish that out, right? We'll do the same on this side, just to take those Sharpie Marks off. Again, you're gonna cut your strap. It's okay, it's leather. You've got some, you're a leather worker, okay? No problems, no worries. So we take that out and bam, now both sides. Then we flip over and we go to our lesser grit. If we fill this, you'll notice this is relatively new. This is not. If this gets pretty bad, if this gets really junky, right? Use an old blade and just put it perpendicular, right? An old blade. I'm going to use uh, this side because this is not an old blade. And I'm going to take off the surface of the compound, getting it, you know, I'm not going to obsess about it, okay? This is nothing to obsess about. Um, get it down to roughly bare, and then I'm going to heat this up if it doesn't take crayoning very well, or in my case, I'm just going to crayon it back on, Okay? If that doesn't work for you, if that's not going how you want it to, use a heat gun or a hair dryer to heat this piece up and the strop just a little bit, and you'll see that it goes on a little bit smoother. We now have fresh compound. We're just gonna keep doing what we were doing, okay? 
fresh compound. Now, I have not tested this blade. This one's fresh off the grinder. I have not tested this blade. So I don't know how sharp it is or how it's gonna perform. I'm just gonna go from the feel of the blade on my thumb. Now, when you're running your hand over that, you don't run it this way, okay? You don't run it like that. That's gonna cut you. You're gonna pull it like that. That's gonna allow you to feel it. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It grabs the uh, ridges of your fingers a little bit more, your fingerprints a little bit more. Um, and you can tell the difference. Let's go on our cutting table here real quick. And let's see how this cuts. Yep. <laughs> our fingers were right. They usually are. That is through eight ounce uh, uh, bridle like a laser beam. So that's sharp now. Let me kick over to the uh, Kiridashi because the Kiridashi is essentially the same. It's just got one edge. Now, what's going to happen then is that wire edge is going to always be pushed over to one side. And you don't tip this side up. It's flat, okay? Uh, it's flat. You just want to pull it while it's flat. So sharpening is going to go the same. There we go. I'm pulling that edge. And I can already feel a burr. It's not out here, though. It's not out here, so I'm going to go back to that tip area. Just the tip here. See if I can't get, yeah, now we're wired all the way down. Then I'm gonna lay it flat and just give it a single pull. And that pulls that wire edge off there, okay? And then to my strop. Now this is cheating. I know this one's pretty sharp because I was out here last night in the shop um, cutting some welts for a batch of 50 sheaths but let's see anyway we'll go to this eight ounce and we'll see if it will skive and it do right down to zero without much of an issue in fact that's how feather we got that edge so not much of a problem with our kiridashi and then we're going to want to test the tip to make sure it cuts and it quite clearly does so that should be a decent primer for you on how to sharpen the knives you're going to get from Diabetes Industries. Pretty much whatever one um, you can sharpen like that. If you're going to do flat edges, you'll start flat. You'll uh, do something a little bit different. But we're focusing on the convex offerings. And uh, I think you see how you do that. For very little money, you might even have these in your shop already. Okay? Good luck to you guys. Peace.